Hey guys, Luton here. Welcome back from another episode of Below the Line. This is the weekly series where I discuss your comments from topics that I have posted at the end of each video. The way this format works is that in the first section we discuss your comments from the previous topic and then I post a new topic for you guys to discuss and leave your thoughts about. So last time we were talking about Battlefield potentially putting in mid-round team switching, but we were thinking about in a larger sense mid-round team switching. Is it ever a good thing? And first up, Captain Crunch, who's been a long time subscriber to the channel, he says, The only problem I have with team switching, and this happened to me a lot in Battlefield 2 1942, was that I would get team switched because the other team was losing, and the people were rage quitting. So I went from winning to losing and get that big loss. I know the devs said that they have to be doing something, but what does that mean? If it's objective based, well, there are times that I flank and I root to cause confusion, I don't hit an objective. The objective isn't the pre built game objective, but to slow down or confuse the other team there. The only concern for me is breaking up a parties or friends that always sucks. Yeah, the biggest issue for me with this is that they really didn't give any further information and still haven't that I have seen anyway. Um, we need to know more, but from a wider sense, yeah, you don't want to be moving people that are actually contributing. And that is the whole issue with automated team switching, is sometimes people are contributing. Because, for example, whilst I always talk about playing the objective and focusing on playing the objective and getting together and actually pushing on those things, it doesn't mean that that's just capping flags. It could be destroying tanks. It could be, you know, moving around the enemy, dealing with problem players. It could be flanking, could be back capping, all sorts of different things that you could do there. And the question is, we just don't know what their intentions are. But again, the reason people are concerned is because it's just like historical that often you see these things kind of implemented in a fairly simplistic way instead of actually being done in the right way, which would be, of course, to look at which players are contributing, no matter how they're contributing. I mean, I can't imagine that they're just going to start switching any old people across. I mean, they already said as well that they don't want to be moving people that are actually doing well and contributing. Time will tell, though. Okay, next up, Rob says, if they insist on balancing people mid-round, they're going to have to mitigate the negative reaction people will have upon the switch. More times than not, people will not be happy when switched, and the general attitude towards the game will suffer. If the game made an offer to a player to switch with the option to decline in exchange for an incentive like extra scraps or 2 times 3 XP for the remainder of the round, then it might work. Although, you've got to be real careful, you don't end up having people deliberately abusing that. It still seems risky though, it could seriously backfire. It's a noble idea, but I think the smarter move would be trying to improve matchmaking in between matches. The formula that they use for their skill stat is overly simple and often not accurate. Improve that. Yeah, I mean, this is something as well that I have said for the longest time is, look, please, let's just work on the matchmaking. Let's work on trying to get people together who are of equal skill. As I've highlighted again and again and again, Every round that you play, it seems like the top 25% of each team seem to be carrying the entire round. And that is just something which I've seen throughout the entirety of Battlefield 1. I mean, you just can't look at that and think that it isn't broken. There's just no other way of looking at it. Okay, Warner says, Mentor, maybe pop up a suggestion after you die. Come on, buddy, help us out over here, team swap. <laughs> die. That is uh, way too optimistic there, way too optimistic. What, people are going to switch sides when they're winning? Ha! Huh, who would do that? Oh wait, that's what we used to do back in Battlefield 3, wasn't it? Uh. Next up, the Rook. Unless you can make a really damn good algorithm for calculating which players should be swapped mid-game, and I'm talking really good, it should be voluntary, lest you wish to face the wrath of gamers. And let's be real, nobody wishes to face that wrath. <laughs> EA know all about that. Um, I don't think I would like it personally when I'm on a side that's crushing the opposition, I will voluntarily switch. That said, I think this, well, good on you. I think this mechanic would only work 10% of the time if I were to guess most people feeling frustrated based on your experiences as a server host, admin, Luton, and I am sure others. Well, yeah, absolutely. Perhaps having a prompt asking if you would voluntarily switch, then basically waiting or queuing for somebody else to say yes, I think that'd be better instead of taking control away from players. Okay, look at this. The funniest thing about this, it's actually a good idea to do this. And you know what? They do it in Verdun already. In Verdun and Tannenberg, an indie game with only, what is it, like four devs, but they do contract people in. A really small team, they do this in this game. You, It often says, like, when teams are in balance, like, hey guys, anybody would mind switching over? Do you know what, do you know what it actually speaks to? It speaks to just the, you know how Battlefield is always going on about, we've got the best community, we've got the best community. Well, clearly not. Because, well, for many reasons, clearly not. But it's just like such a bullshit statement. We've got the best community, blah, blah, blah. It's like, please, if you have the best community, then putting something like a prompt into game to saying like, hey guys, team's imbalanced. Anybody mind switching up? It would, you know, people would just do it. 
but there's literally, yeah, I could tell you right now, there's no chance of doing that. You know, sometimes we would do it in BF3, like I say, and sometimes we've done it. I did it literally a little while ago. Remember that video? Check back through my channel. We did it. Me and um, Lone Wolf, we switched up because we had come into a round where we were clearly kicking the ass of the other team. And I said to him, like, dude, this is stupid. You know, this is going to be a, a steamroll. Why don't we switch up to the other side and see what happens, see whether we can turn it back, set ourselves a little challenge, you know? And we did, and we were making real good progress until the fucking game threw an entire squad in onto the other side, and then we got screwed. But, you know, my point being, though, you know, if they genuinely had a solid, real good community that believed in sort of, you know, actually challenging and working and sort of trying to keep, create balance and all these things, you know, they could just put that in there, and it wouldn't even be an issue. Oh, my God, did I actually get a melee kill for one time? Okay, Tula's got a good one for us. He says, I was thinking for some reason that it'd be about how people switch teams sometimes mid-round themselves. In some cases, I understand that. But when people do it just to be able to stay on the winning side, I'd rather see a kick happen at that time instead. In most situations, balancing should be done between the map changes, and even then, a lot of care and thought has to be put into it. So it doesn't separate people who want to play together or simply create equally imbalanced games. Unfortunately, I don't see this as a good option, if only possibly for balancing. For lengthy games where you have a lot of people, a lot of time, or high amounts of tickets, I kind of like lengthy rounds, but those can get extremely frustrating if your team is getting nowhere or your team is getting absolutely destroyed. And that's usually when most people just quit out straight away, right? Mid-round balancing is kind of necessary for games rounds like that, in my opinion, but moving players or moving more than one player at the same time should be avoided as it can make the situation even more frustrating and possibly piss off the players that were still enjoying the round, even if they were just enjoying it for a bit. And that's actually a really good point that I didn't see anybody else make. And quite honestly, I hadn't even thought about it. Which is, even if someone is not necessarily contributing, maybe the most, or maybe they're on a losing side or something, how do you know that person isn't enjoying themselves? Because statistics and data and so on, they can't tell you that. Just because your team is getting your ass handed to you, and even maybe you are getting your ass handed to you, some people might still be having a good time. And who's to determine that? Right, so we go on. While I love to think about a possibility of having the game itself provide balancing mid-round through other means, it's not exactly easy to handle. If it's not done correctly, there's a good chance the feature itself is going to create imbalance, or that players are just going to abuse it to turn the situation unfair at one way or another. Absolutely. He says, I guess this is something that makes or can make 5v5 games popular as the rounds are likely short, the whole session might be over rather fast, which in itself then can be popular. But the way I see it, you don't have to focus on team balance that much and you don't really have to do balance fixing, fixing that much in general. I, I would say that's probably definitely true. Simply throwing about same skill level people against each other is usually, though not always, enough. And to make things easier, some games have actually the option to give up if the game is going very badly. While it might not solve everything, uh, maybe that could be brought into 30 or 60 player games and use it as an indication that balancing is needed. Yeah, you could have enough people vote up, but then again, you've got to be careful that it's just like if they start losing a round, it doesn't go the right way. That's a tricky one as well. Having a decent amount of players likely should be more than one or two squads to remove some possibility of planned or throwing a game away. Vote to then give up after a certain point has been reached. Just something as a possible improvement, not fully fledged out thought out solution as it really isn't yeah i would say yeah it's not fully fleshed out but it's an interesting kind of starting point to have a conversation okay straight into another one fragger he says my biggest issue that all systems balancing mid-round have always been mediocre and it's true it's just it's generally this is why i was freaked out by it in the first place is because just generally i've never really found it to work he says i prefer it as a voluntary choice the problem is that none of the good players ever do that not true um, because they're afraid to do worse on 24 32 player servers a single good player switching teams can change the outcome Outcome of the game. I doubt though that 64 player servers will be impacted by these player switches anyway. I would leave it. If they really want to implement this, it should be about switching two squads, one doing well and one averaging around the middle of the scoreboard. Again, you see it's contentious even then. Because let's say you've got a squad together, you're fighting. If anything, I would imagine a squad getting moved is going to be way more pissed off than, you know, a, a, just an individual person, you know. And also, if you actually have a squad which is contributing and doing well, whilst yes, it could potentially balance the team up, what well, if that squad leaves, it could literally trigger like a domino rally and that's just like a server killer. So it's a very difficult one. It's a very, very difficult one. And 
I just think, yeah, I just think they're better off without it. I would much rather see them implement some kind of visual, like, voluntary system where it's like, hey guys, seems like the round's imbalanced. Some people mind switching up or, you know, and I've said for ages what I would like, if you look at this right now, when you go to your scoreboard, what I would love to see is, like, see how my name is highlighted? Imagine if you could highlight that and wait for, like we said earlier, like another person gets highlighted and then those two players switch. So even if both sides are full, let's say you've got two full sides, okay, then it can still switch those players over like for like that would be really great okay Jimbo's up with the next one he says I think mid-round team switching depends very much on the situation and the game I've been part of several FPS communities over the past 10 to 15 years ranging from games like COD series Battlefield series Armor 2 and 3 even some free to play like Heroes Generals and this subject has been ongoing for the whole time some games especially more recent ones force balancing of the numbers of players per team if one side clearly has a disadvantage in numbers regardless of skill or contribution to the current game where other games leave the balancing to the players which is easily exploited some armor 3 king of the hill servers don't enforce balancing and i've seen occasions on a 120 player server where the csat team have had over 60 players and the blue four and the independents have had less than 30 players a team Sometimes people have to leave a game or they lose connection in a short space of time and one team can then be down several players. Now there are still some players that will notice this and think we'll have to swap over to make things more fair. Other people may have been willing but have been so engrossed in what they are doing like tunnel vision they don't actually realise. And then there are people who only like a certain side or a certain faction that they don't like playing the other side or maybe working towards a certain medal for a weapon. And then there are people who have done well for their team that they don't want to swap but continue fighting for their team regardless of fairness and of team numbers. I personally think games that have to enforce balancing instead of leaving it up to the players have a little trust in their player base like I was saying before, and community that have to make that choice for them instead of letting the players decide for themselves. And this is a really good point. So as I still I can still recall games where a team would be down a few players and just simply asking if anybody's willing to switch over. And quite often people would. I feel that with gaming becoming more and more popular, it also attracts more players who just don't care about other players or the game's community as a whole, only themselves and their score. That's my thoughts on the subject, can't wait for next below the line. Look, my biggest takeaway from this is that yes, the best system in my opinion to try and balance out teams in terms of moving players around is a voluntary system and a heads up system for several reasons. One, if you are actually giving people like a notification of, hey, the teams are imbalanced right now, would you mind switching up? It makes people aware that they might not be. Sometimes they might not actually be looking at the scoreboard. They might actually not realize that maybe seven or eight players from the other team have left that round and they're so busy focused on what they're doing, they're not thinking about it. From another point of view, the highlighted point that have been made by several people uh, and myself that, you know what, it really just shows very little trust in the community. Uh, it, it's weird because Battlefield is always banging on, Battlefield marketing, they can't stop banging on about how best, best community, best community, like hashtag all over the place, right? And it's like, well, clearly not. And I think anybody could say that anyway, right? But clearly not. And it's just like, look, please, if you actually want to have a good community, then treat them as such. Get them involved, get them actually making positive contributions in terms of switching up. As I say, it's something that we had done many, many times in Battlefield in the past. And, you know, more often than not, sometimes if you just post like a non-salty comment like, guys, teams are a bit imbalanced, anybody mind switching up? I know it seems laughable to imagine that that could be a thing, but actually it is. Sometimes people do genuinely not mind balancing things up. Now look, here from another point of view, what about this? Like we were saying before, I, I personally, from my experience of running a server and, and balancing teams in Battlefield, but other things as well, uh, I often find that, like I said in the last, you know, sort of video for Below the Line, moving only one or two players around is actually all that's required to often make a big balance to a team. And the other big thing I always used to say when managing my server and stuff in general is don't judge it on one round. That is the biggest takeaway that I found. And this is something which an algorithm isn't going to do, you know? It's like you can't judge from one round because my personal experience of playing Battlefield for a long time is that you can lose a round it devastatingly and then amazingly the next round you can turn it back again because you know what one or two people might leave and sometimes that can be all that's required to make a giant difference so i actually used to get pissed off when we used to have the kind of team balancing mechanic because you know you would feel like oh yeah yeah now we get to turn it back and see whether we can turn things around bang the game forces you to switch up and you never get that opportunity and as i say very very often you can lose one round two rounds and then suddenly you can switch it up and i will often say to my guys like if we're in a game of battlefield and we're getting ruined and things are going very very bad unless it gets to a very trolling 
you know, steamrolling, frustrating situation where you really feel like you can't move or breathe, you know, hang in there, try and defend, try and do the best you can, and then just wait. The round comes, one or two people switch around, move back, leave, whatever, couple new people come in, that can often be enough to switch it up and change it up. So, you know, I really feel like as annoying as it is, what somebody what somebody else earlier said is the exactly the right thing. We need to think much more about matchmaking, much more about getting generally quality players in together, much more that than worrying about just switching the teams up to balance. It really, and at the end of the day, okay, I can't imagine that they're going to change it so that when people join as a group, as a squad, that they're going to break that squad up. I can't imagine people would lose it, okay? That's not going to happen. So all of this balancing, well, what happens if you're in a round like I was where we were trying to sort of do the best we could to pull the game back and then bam, on the other side, a full squad joins? You know, you, you can't balance that. So part two now below the line and a topic that even I am sick of now, it seems that devs are just not getting it when it comes to loot boxes, arguably predictably so. Now a survey reported this week from the upcoming GDC 2018, that's Game Devs Conference in March in San Francisco, well this survey has shown that surprisingly, not surprisingly, they're just not getting it. And that's despite the huge inferno of bullshit that was Star Wars Battlefront 2, which involved EA Dice floundering around like a beached whale trying to save themselves from being dissected by ravenous hordes. They didn't make it back into the water, by the way. So according to this anonymous survey of 4,500 devs, the biggest issue seems to be not if loot boxes should exist, but more how can they be implemented to a Western audience, compared to the Asian market of places like China and Japan, where they form a regular and established part of games, even though they have got some regulation to try and protect gamers there as well, which is what they're trying to do here. It seems that devs are frustrated that audiences here are just less accepting of the loot box rush and they want their share of the sweet, sweet rewards because how dare we be pissed off? They want their bloody pound of flesh. Developers were seen to be leaving comments like, so long as the content is accessible while playing the game and all parts of the game are balanced for gameplay first and monetization second, I see no legitimate basis for complaints. Well, no because this is an idealistic wonderland nonsense. It's a utopia. We know by now that even passive loot box rewards are exploitative, but like, you know, skins and stuff, to a degree, because essentially it is gambling. You don't know what you're gonna receive and you are paying to basically randomly be assigned a reward. Whereas in a game, most of the time, of course you're gonna have drops and stuff, right? But most of the time when you are unlocking stuff or gaining access to stuff, you can have some degree of understanding what you're gonna do there. And also you understand that the time and effort and constructiveness, you're actually putting something into the game there. Now, some people also get stuck on the semantics of you must receive monetary compensation for it to be qualified as gambling. But officials in several countries were already seen to basically not make this differentiation and just state out and out that in many cases, this was a soft introduction to gambling and certainly habit forming. They were alarmed by this. And if it were not for the fact that game devs seemed to backtrack very, very hastily, I think they were going to go forward and start putting regulations down on this. Now you can debate whether or not you think that's a good idea, but they're going to do it. Now, other devs wanted to highlight their concerns that because Star Wars Battlefront 2 got it so wrong that this had now damaged people's perception of the format. And this could potentially have a lasting impression on audiences, subsequently affecting game creators' jobs. What a load of bullshit. Because, you know, no game dev has ever been successful by relying on, you know, making a good game and not just milking a small percentage of its player base on deceitful and manipulative mechanics, as well as shiny, shiny graphics designed to make you feel that high of opening a loot box, just in the way that pretty much the entire gambling industry functions with its games and apps. No, no, without loot boxes, the games industry would just certainly crash and burn. There was also the classic, we need loot boxes and microtransactions to make our games profitable. Without them, we wouldn't be able to develop games. This has been demonstrably disproven already. It's just nonsense. Don't buy that bullshit. It's safe to say that loot boxes are not going away anytime soon. Anybody could have predicted this. So it's important to keep reinforcing the message that gamers will not tolerate or stand for these abusive practices. Call out games that do. It's important more than anything to just keep talking about it. I know sometimes people have said on these kind of videos they're sick of hearing about it. Yeah, of course you're sick of hearing about it. We're sick of talking about it. But you have to, you have to keep talking about it and highlighting companies who think they can take advantage of their player bases. 
no matter how much they wrap it up and say, oh, no, 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 we didn't mean to do this, we didn't think of this, blah, blah, blah. Bullshit, okay? If you're making a game, this stuff gets thought through, it gets discussed, it gets planned, and it gets implemented. None of this stuff just happens by chance. They discuss it, they work it out in detail. That is how things are developed, that's how things are made. No big game or game at all is just going to have things put into it by random. People are going to discuss it, plan it, work it out. It all is gone through. Uh, you know, with so many of these things, I've said this before, I, I always love in a kind of like uh, horrific way. I like to imagine myself sitting at that table in the room, not just with this, but often I, I've said before, like stupid adverts and stuff. Sitting there at that table and people are discussing it and working it out and they go, yeah, that's the one. That's the one we're going to do. Some Somebody okays it, somebody checks that and goes, yes, this is what we're going to do. It doesn't just happen randomly and people go, oh no, oh, oh really? We did that? We, we put that, oh my god, oh, we, do you know, we didn't even think about it. What a load of bullshit. This stuff is decided upon and it is deliberately implemented into games. And after all, all the discussion around this did work in sending a message, albeit somewhat like talking to a brick wall with EA Dice. It's all we can do, you know, that and you know, actually not purchasing games that enable these habits, which has started to happen to a soft degree when you look at purchases and also like declining player numbers on games where this kind of crap does get put in there. So guys tell me down below what you think about specifically these developers points of view. We all know loot boxes are generally trash but are these devs just trying to blow smoke or do they actually believe this crap? Tell me what you think down below. I'll see you next time for some more Below the Line.